Well, again, as always, it's a pleasure to be with you in the Lord's house. And if you have your Bibles, would you turn to Hebrews chapter 5 with me? Uh, Hebrews chapter 5. This evening, picking back up our study through the book of Hebrews, uh, we're uh, going right back into um, where we left off uh, a couple of weeks ago. And before we read um, our passage in chapter 5, I'd just like to back up three verses and uh, read what we read last week. Uh, The passage says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And so we talked about that the last time we were in Hebrews, and what we're going to be uh, reading tonight uh, is beginning to explain how it is that we can come before Christ and how it is that we have such a great high priest that can be entreated as we have in Jesus. And so if you have your Bibles in Hebrews chapter 5, uh, we'll read our passage in verse 1 together. The scripture says, For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, this day, uh, today have I begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now let's go to our Lord in a word of prayer. Father God, we come before you and we thank you for the great high priest that we have. We thank you for Christ. And Lord, we thank you that he's so easy to be entreated. Uh, Lord, that we can come before uh, you by him uh, at any hour of the day and we know that he hears us. And Lord, we pray that by his sacrifice for our sins uh, tonight that you would hear us. Uh, We pray that you'd be with us in this service, that you would help us understand your word. Uh, Lord, that later you would help us to uh, sing more of your praises together. And Lord, we pray that um, you would be with our uh, those who couldn't make it to worship with us tonight. Uh, We ask that if there are any lost in here, that you would draw them to be saved in Jesus. Be with our missionaries where they're at and help them to uh, have uh, men and women converted to the gospel. And we pray that, again, they would come back to uh, worship with us sometime. Uh, We pray that where we've sinned against you, you'd forgive us, and that you'd keep us until the coming of Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. So, explaining how Christ is our great high priest. We see first in our passage that Christ is a priest for mankind. He is a priest for men. In verse 1, for every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God. The office of a priest is a human office. It is an office that is is filled by a man. Uh, That is, it is for men. It is is because of uh, of men that this office needs to be be, uh, done. And it is... Uh, a job that men fulfill. Uh, it's, it's, it's a job that, uh, that is done uh, by men. And this is for a couple of reasons. Uh, first is because the priest, human priests, must represent man. And something that's not man, something that is not human, cannot represent us before God. Again, in verse 1, is ordained for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. It says that it is for men, uh, that is to be on behalf of men in things pertaining to God, to be our representative before him. 
And there are two, sac- uh, two offerings that are mentioned here that I'd like to take, to take note of. First, it says that he offers gifts, and then it says that he offers sacrifice. The first, gifts, are uh, offerings that are given in praise to God. Uh, whether it be a thanksgiving offering or a free will offering, these are typically unbloody uh, offerings that are given to God. And then the second, sacrifices are usually associated with blood, with the taking of the life of an animal, or in the case of Christ, his offering his own self on the cross. Uh, this was something that the priests in the Old Testament, that they all did uh, in their service. They would offer gifts and sacrifices. Gifts in Leviticus uh, 16, uh, 22, verse 29. When ye will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will. Offer it willingly. This, this free will offering. And in Leviticus 16, 17, the, the offerings that were made by blood. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. All the offerings that were brought to the tabernacle, whether they be uh, these gifts or whether they be sacrifices of blood, they all were offered through the priest, through this human mediation. And so that's one reason why a priest uh, must, a priest for men must be a man himself. And these Christ did. Uh, We already saw in in Hebrews chapter 2 and, and going on that Christ became a man for us. That he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. And in Colossians 3.17 it says, Whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Uh, we, we, our free will offerings, our thanksgiving offerings, are all by him. And if they are not by him, they are not valid free will offerings. They are not valid uh, offerings of praise given to God. And in Luke 23, 34, Christ gave his own self uh, as a sacrifice. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Christ uh, mediating for us. He says, forgive them. He's representing us before God when he asks this. And so uh, he, he's, he's serving this role of representing mankind. And second, also, a priest must be a man and for men because he must be sympathetic for them. In verse 2, who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? For that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof, he ought as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins." Uh, because of the infirmity of human priests, because they're weak as we are weak, uh, because, they, uh, because they know the power of sin. Uh, they've experienced it out in the world and, and in the Old Testament. And with regard to temporal priests, they experienced it in themselves. They knew the power of their own sin. In Numbers fifteen twenty seven, If any soul sin through ignorance... Then he shall bring a she-goat of the first year for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sinneth ignorantly, when he sinneth by ignorance before the Lord, to make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. Ye shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance, both for him that is born among the children of Israel, and for the stranger that sojourneth among them. Uh, This was a, uh, a law that was given for the infirmity of the people. Because sometimes people are misinformed, sometimes people are ignorant, and a priest must know this. The priests in the Old Testament would know that they were ignorant. Uh, they may not always live in accordance with that. They were sinners themselves. And yet the idea is that if he's a man, if he's from among men, he knows his own infirmities. And he can have compassion on those that sin ignorantly like this, or sin because of some other fault in themselves. And so priests uh, must be men and must feel infirmity 
in order to do the human office of a priest towards God, to be our proper representative before him, to be merciful to us. Now we know, of course, Christ had no sin. We, we read in Hebrews 4.15, just a moment ago, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Christ was sinless. And so we might say, well, isn't this a disanalogy? Isn't this a, uh, a place where Christ's ministry was not the same as the ministry of the Old Testament? And in a way it is. Christ is perfect. Christ never sinned. Christ did not have personal failings towards sin. And yet he was still made a high priest that could sympathize with us in our sin because our sin was laid on him. Because he knows the power of sin that was put to his account on the cross and which took his life, that he laid down his life because of. In uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In Galatians 3.13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He took on himself the guilt of our sin. He took on himself the curse of our sin, that is, death. And so, because he felt our infirmities in those ways, he can be a compassionate high priest towards us. He knows what sin is and what sin does to mankind. And so he can be faithful to us and and, and compassionate towards us because sin was laid onto him. And so what does this mean for us first? That Christ's office of being a high priest is explicitly for men. It's explicitly for men and women, for, for, for humanity, that God sent His only begotten Son into the world. Verse 1, For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. And so the, the priestly office of Christ is toward God. It's in things pertaining to God, but it's for men. It, it, it's, it's for them. It is the gift of God to them. And, and so it's the gift of God towards us. Christ coming to fulfill His office of high priest, able to save to the uttermost all those that come to God by Him. It is for us that God sent Christ into the world. Uh, as the Gospel of Luke says, that, uh, that, that glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Toward men, Jesus Christ is given for us. And if you are a child of man, if you are from among mankind, then Christ comes and is set forth before you in this way. Christ has come to be a priest for all who trust in Him. And if you come today and trust in Him, I know that He will save you to the uttermost. He has not come for angels. We read before in Hebrews 2 that. He has come for man. And if you are a man, if you are a woman, then you may come to Christ today. You have good warrant to do that in this passage. Also, Christ's priesthood is not just, we see, for men, but it's ordained by God the Father. In verse 4, And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. Rather, this is that nobody properly takes this office on themselves. Nobody really fulfills this office, except God appoints them to it. Many people in the in the history of the world they've pretended like they were priests. They've put on the get up and they've gone to uh, make sacrifices or to mediate before. Uh, before the gods for man, but they were not called of God. No man taketh this honor to himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. And Aaron was singled out among all Israel to be the first high priest in Israel. Numbers 3 9. Thou shalt give the Levites unto Aaron and to his sons. They are wholly given unto him out of the children of Israel. And thou shalt appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall wait on their priest's office. 
and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, And I, behold, I have taken the Levites from the children of Israel instead of the firstborn that openeth the matrix from uh, among the children of Israel. Therefore, the Levites shall be mine. He says that he has taken Levi, the, the tribe of Levi, and he's given them to Aaron, the high priest. He, he's appointed him to be the chief of the priests. And so he was chosen by God for that. And only those who are chosen by God may approach nigh to his throne to make intercession for the people. Uh, he didn't take this honor to himself. The Lord bestowed it on him. And in verse 5 then, it says, So also Christ glorified not himself to be made in an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. Christ did not glorify himself in this. Christ didn't, uh, didn't take this office to him unilaterally by force. Uh, rather, the Father appointed it to him. He who said, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. He was the one who appointed Christ as high priest. Christ didn't take it on himself. Philippians 2.5 uh, says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, uh, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Though he was in the form of God, God in his essence, uh, yet he, he thought not robbery to, to, to be equal with God. Uh, he took on him no reputation. He was made like a servant. He didn't take the office of priest to himself, but it was bestowed on him by the Father. There's a, there's a unity among the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, about the priesthood of Christ. Uh, Christ was made a man, and so he qualified in that to be a priest. But more than that, he was chosen of God to be a priest. The Father calling him, and saying, Thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. And the Holy Ghost being poured out on him like oil, as we often uh, sing together in Psalm 134. Uh, Christ was, was called by God to be a priest. He didn't take it to himself. This was not as Aaron was often. Oftentimes Aaron was self-seeking. Sometimes he sought to, to push himself out and to get more than God had, uh, had appointed for him. Numbers 12, verse 1, Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman which he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. That They were upset with Moses because he had married this, uh, this Ethiopian girl. And they said, Hasn't God spoken by us? Can't we just do the job that Moses is doing? Uh, Aaron and Miriam, they were self-seeking here. They, they wanted a promotion. They wanted to lead Israel in Moses' stead. And so they were trying to usurp him. But Christ does not do this. Christ is not self-seeking in the incarnation. In the incarnation, Christ is concerned with doing his office as a priest, with, with saving sinners, offering sacrifice, on our behalf. And so he, he lays himself down. He, he submits himself to the Father's will in the incarnation and dies on the cross for us. It was the Father who appointed Christ to be the high priest for this end. Again, in uh, our passage, it, it, it quotes a psalm, and that's Psalm 110, verse 4, that we sang earlier. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Uh, it is the Lord, the, the Father, who swears and does not repent. He appoints to him the office of a high priest. And so, uh, and so Christ is not just a priest for men, from among men, but a priest ordained by God. And if we really, if we go back and I might as well read it since I've got it bookmarked here. 
Um, in Psalm 110, we even read that this one to whom it said, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, is not just a man, as our passage says, but again we have a proof of the deity of Christ. Verse 1 of Psalm 110 says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people will be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And in verse 1 again, the Lord said to my Lord. The Lord said to my Lord. The Lord spoke. God spoke to God. True God to true God. And said, sit thou at my right hand. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And so Christ, being a true man and being truly God, is chosen by the Father to this task to make intercession for his people. And that's why we read in chapter 4 that Christ is a great high priest towards us. That he's able to, 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 to intercede for us. That we can come to his throne of grace at any time uh, in order to, to obtain help from him. And so, believers, we know because of this that Christ hears us. That Christ is sympathetic towards us. Because he was made a man like us. Because he obeyed the Father in the incarnation. In giving his life for the people. Galatians 3.13 Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth upon a tree. Christ knows our infirmities, and he knows the death that we face. And so Christ hears us. He's sympathetic towards us. And we also know that the Father hears Christ. Not only does Christ hear us, but the Father hears Christ. And why is that? Because the Father appointed him as the final priest. As that eternal priest after the order of Melchizedek. In Zechariah 3.8, I'd like to note something um, beautiful in the scripture. And it has to do with what we've been studying in, um, in Wednesday night, looking through the law. In Zechariah 3.8 it says, Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch, a reference to Christ. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the engraving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of the land in one day. He speaks of that priest that he will send, the branch, and he says, I will engrave the engraving thereof. And what does that mean? I will engrave the engraving thereof. What it means is what we've studied in Wednesday night about the, the, the garments of the high priest and how they had two stones that sat on their shoulders uh, that, that had the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. When they went into the temple and they bore those names, they were the representatives of all Israel. Exodus 28.9 says, Thou shalt take two onyx stones and grave on them the names of the children of Israel. In verse 12, Thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod for stones of memorial unto the children of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon his two shoulders for a memorial. Uh, what is meant when he says, I will engrave the gr engraving thereof, is he means... I will make him a representative, a true representative of the people, a true priest for the people, not as the priests in the past who were sometimes corrupt and sometimes uh, they were not able to do their jobs as they should have been able to. They, uh, rather, Christ is made a high priest for us and a perfect high priest. God himself engraves the engraving of our names on him by the Holy Ghost. And so uh, we know that because God does this, God the Father makes God the Son a priest for us by the Holy Ghost. Therefore, the Father hears him. The Father 
has mercy on the people that he represents. And so, believers, as we go from this place, I hope that we uh, will remember this, how great a high priest Jesus Christ is towards us. And now if there's an unbeliever here, I'd like to say you cannot approach to God to make any atonement for yourself. You cannot be your own representative before God. We read earlier in Leviticus 16, 17, there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. When the high priest in the Old Testament went into the tabernacle and he made a sacrifice for the people, that one sacrifice, it says no one else was to be in the temple. Nobody else. Only he went in to make that atonement. No one contributed anything at all to the atonement that was made by that high priest. And even more so with Christ. No one enters in while he makes atonement for the wicked. And so do not come to Jesus Christ thinking that you can bring anything of yourself, thinking you can bring any work, any church attendance singing. We talked about this this morning. Do not come into the tabernacle while He makes atonement for you because you cannot contribute anything. You cannot offer your own sacrifice for sin. There is only the one, Jesus Christ. And so come to Him and receive His gift. 2 Corinthians 5.12 He hath made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Come to Jesus Christ and ask after His righteousness. And again, believers, we know what great a savior, uh, how great a Savior we have. And we also see in our passage that He has been set forth as a priest before the whole world. He's been set forth as a man giving Himself for His people. And that gives us warrant to go out of this place and preach the gospel to everyone that we know. Because they are humans just as Christ became a human. They are people just as Christ came to intercede for. And so we can go and have a good warrant to preach the gospel to them. And let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Lord, we pray tonight that you would uh, Lord, first be glorified and all that we've said and done here. Lord, we thank you for Christ. We thank you for his sitting at your right hand now. And Lord, even knowing uh, our own infirmities, our own sins even, uh, Lord, we thank you that we can come before you boldly like this. We pray that where we sin against you, though, that you would forgive us and bring us into fellowship with you. Uh, we ask that you be with those who couldn't make it to worship, that you keep them safe and bring them back. Uh, We pray for ourselves also that you'd give us some opportunity to uh, preach the gospel this week. Lord, to share with somebody what Christ Jesus has done for our souls. And Lord, we ask that you'd keep us until his return. And it's in Christ's holy name we pray it all.